Yo, this has been the most incompetent week of NFL football that I've had to witness. A lot of quarterbacks, a lot of offenses, just really stinking up the joint and not really playing <laughs> on point right now. Like, it's crazy. Man, and just a lot of offenses not taking advantage of certain, you know, plays or players. And to me, it's just, it's mind-boggling. I feel like the only team that really somehow looks decent overall I mean, I don't know. It's it's tough. I mean, you you could. I want to say the Steelers are really good, but you know the Bengals were giving them a run for their money. You know, for the first half. But yeah, like definitely they came in and they blew out the Bengals like they were supposed to. So to me, I think they're definitely the best looking team right now. Even though I still question their, the strength of their secondary outside of um, Edmonds and Fitzpatrick. Um, but regardless, though. You they're definitely the best looking team um, any given time. They have threats all over. I mean, the receivers, once again, the, the, nobody drafts Steelers wide receivers better than the Steelers. I don't know why I said Steelers, but nobody drafts wide receivers better than Pittsburgh. And, you know, having Cl Chase Claypool, you know, Juju Smith, Deontay Johnson, James Washington, I mean, really four solid receivers in their own perspective top it up with James Conner who really in my opinion is an underrated running back and is just you know scratching the surface on reaching his potential after really bouncing back from like bad injured season so I don't even think he's fully 100 yet being himself but I think he'll get there um but yeah like especially when he's healthy he's a top 10 running back for sure but Cleveland looked disgusting yesterday I mean how do you not put up points against that team don't I don't don't give me the win excuse don't give me the win all right Aaron Rodgers had to deal with the same thing in Green Bay all right and definitely other quarterbacks too in the same region had to deal with that uh outside condition that was terrible you know both Baker and Deshaun Watson were bad I mean you know I'm not saying Deshaun you know was playing terrible I mean but for, for a fact, their offense had many, many missed opportunities. I think I, was, I saw definitely a lot of drops. And I'll tell you this right now, I was watching Red Zone. So definitely, for the most part, I was watching just offenses not really putting up when they should be putting up. I mean, it's just a lot of incompetence, man. That was a low-scoring game. That should have been a you know a high-scoring game. Uh, Jacksonville, they looked like they were primed for the, um, you know, the upset, really getting over Green Bay and at points where they were kind of sloppy, but they found a way to really come through and win the game at the end. It, sh it was a closer game than I expected it to be, but yeah, Jacksonville had a chance, and I mean, the quarterback was just terrible, terrible. Um, Minshew, I think the only thing against him really is arm strength, but I mean, just give the dude like one off season to really, you know, develop his triceps and his arm swing, and he can definitely throw the ball a little further. You know, you can definitely increase your strength when it comes to throwing power, I believe that. So if the opportunity is there, I think Minshew can get better on that. I definitely would still give him a shot. Um, you know, I mean, decision-making is another thing. That's something where you got to be calm and patient in the pocket. So, yeah. Um, but I still would take Minshew over a lot of this, you know, a few starting quarterbacks right now for their certain teams. We're not going to talk about the Jets. I mean, God forbid them. I mean, they're a mess. And they're looking like to get their next number one overall quarterback in like the past three years <laughs> what franchise does that but the Jets I mean crazy not even the Browns could accomplish this speed I think the Jets are just the worst team ever I mean that Super Bowl that was just one luck it's in any ways though but like the rest of the league I mean I can go ahead and progress further down um, you know the Chiefs were on a bye so you know Luckily, we didn't have to see anything from them. But the Bills and the Cardinals, great ending. But aside from that, in the middle of the game, a lot of muddy plays from both quarterbacks. And just, you know, like they weren't having their best days, settling for a lot of field goals, not being able to convert into touchdowns, you know, when they got in the red zone. Um, obviously, Murray definitely did get some work done with his legs. But, um, but I, honestly, you know what I mean? Like, 
we've seen better flawless games from Murray. You know, I would definitely say this is probably one of his sloppiest performances this season, aside the Lions game um, that I've seen so far. Um, and I've kind of watched a few games here and there. But, you know, um, that was pretty sloppy. The Chargers were god awful with her. I mean, Herbert really, he tried his best, but he just uh, it was messy. Tua um, had some opportunities to really put up, you know. They they got the win. It wasn't clean, but you know what I mean. You know, a couple of miscues here and there on offense. It, it was just like you could see incompetence throughout the whole league, man. Uh, I'm missing some other. Don't get me started on the Raiders. My God, like one minute Derek Carr looks like he's decent, and the next minute you're just wondering like, what is he doing? Um, Drew Locke. It's like what happened after that rookie year where he was going crazy game after game after game. He kind of just you know, deflated. And I'm like, what is he doing? Like, you know, he's got the arm and he's playing for the perfect city to really let that ball travel even further. But it's like, accuracy, dude. Accuracy. Where is it at? Um, you know what I mean? I know his offensive line isn't the best and his running backs ain't doing crap for them. That's for sure. How do you have two technical lead? I mean, they're not... But, like, how do you have two really good running backs on your roster and neither one of them want to show up and play football and Lindsey or Melvin Gordon like I don't understand that to me I never felt like they should have chased after Melvin Gordon in the first place but it is what it is it's done to me it just causes more confusion because then you're playing hot potato and to me I'm like if you got two all stud running backs like you know I mean they may not, not be selfless I mean they may not be selfish but that's still playing with fire though in my opinion it's like don't ruin a groove if you got something going on with one running back. Just have a complimentary piece to the next behind your, you know, your bell cow. So to me, I think that's kind of confusing. Uh, but regardless, uh, other games, other games, the Seahawks. Russell Wilson was disgusting. I mean, absolutely disgusting. I think this is the worst game I've ever seen him fucking play against the Rams. That was the worst game. Jared Goff, who I mind you, in my opinion, is top three most overrated quarterback in the NFL had a better performance than he did and that just speaks volumes over someone who really was the front runner MVP two games ago until two divisional foes made him look like as if <laughs> you might want to have second thought on that idea uh, wow that was just just dropful um, other teams other teams hmm I mean, the Bears and Vikings were pretty, eh. I mean, Kirk Cousins, like I said, he's also in my top three. Top three overrated quarterbacks. In fact, you got two in a division, hands down, all right, with Matthew Stafford in there as well, who, by the way, was disgusting. How do you lose to the Washington football team being up by more than three possessions? I mean, how do you do that? Okay, maybe it wasn't more than three, but it was definitely at least three. They were up 24-3. to three. I mean, the defense, yeah, you got to give up points. But it's like, as on the offense, when you see this happens, why are you being unanswered? Why are you not responding with points on your own? Stafford is so disgusting. I'm like, and people trying to defend him, saying that he should be on it. That needs to stop. I mean, that at that point, people are ludicrous, thinking that the team is the reason why he's losing. He's had so many Pro Bowl receivers to throw the ball to. All right, Calvin Johnson retired early because he didn't believe shit in this guy. All right. If this was Aaron Rodgers, who, by the way, was rooting for him to come to Green Bay and he wanted to go to Green Bay, I think we would still see him play today. But it's because Stafford hasn't proven shit. All he does is throw the fucking ball up and then force Calvin Johnson to jump up and get it while, meanwhile, falling to the ground. He's got five defenders pummeling into his fucking ribs, chest, torso, everywhere where he's all fucking banged up i mean come on the dude was so banged up and tired of playing because stafford did not give a damn about his fucking health or condition just throwing the ball up there it's like you had it easy you know what i mean it's like damn i mean look at julio and how far he, how long he's been playing compared to megatron all right and don't give me that bullshit he had golden tape before he retired and now to mention they had Sue, they had talent. Calvin will tell you they had talent, but they didn't have a winning culture. Why? It starts with the leader. 
You can tell me about Calvin Johnson. He showed up every day. I'll tell you who didn't show up. Matthew Stafford. And that fucking trash overrated quarterback is the reason why the Lions have yet to win a playoff game. All right? To me, they're in the same state, really, what the Browns are in right now. Like, the Browns are basically the Detroit Lions <laughs> 10 years ago. They finally got a decent, mediocre quarterback to back them up. But the thing is, the quarterback can't do shit. Like, can't do nothing. I mean, you could put so many talent around the quarterback, but then they can't put up. I mean, you look at what Aaron Rodgers has to work with. There was times when he had less than what Matthew Stafford had and still made something out of it. I mean, dude threw a Hail Mary pass to Richard Rodgers. Tell me where Richard Rodgers is at right now. Where is he at? I'm telling you, great quarterbacks put their players in the best position to win, not in the best position to retire the next year because you don't think that they're going to do shit like Calvin Johnson. Stafford's overrated. Piece of shit. Lost to the fucking... Oh, they won. Never mind. They won. Oh, yeah, because 19 seconds. Hmm. Two easy throws that any really competent quarterback can make. Oh, yeah. Not to mention, he couldn't even get it into where Prater had it easy. He had to kick a fucking 59-yard field goal. 59 yards. To me, that's almost darn near close to the record. I think the record was 63. So, like... I mean, I don't think you were really doing your kicker that much favor. You could say, oh, yeah, well, he had 19 seconds. I mean, who else could have made better than that? I'll tell you who else. 15 other quarterbacks in the NFL. That's who. <laughs> um, Lamar Jackson, um, not to his fault. I know their offense has been struggling. Mainly, I think that's because the play calling has been just bad. I don't know. I don't think it's on Lamar. To me, it's like, yeah, you could say he's inaccurate at times, not throwing the ball right, finding the guys open here and there. Um, I just think it's the scheme, really. It's like, like, how do you go from what you did last year to this year, you know, other than if you just show that you're a one-trick pony, um, forcing him to run. I think maybe that probably has got what to Lamar Jackson. He felt more prone to just start running and start than rather throw the ball. He had this cadence in Louisville, which is why he slipped the way he did in the first round. But it's like he's got the arm power. He's got the talent. He's got accuracy. It's just believe in it, stay in there, and just throw it from the pocket. He can be a pocket passer, hands down. He's just so talented as a running back. It's like, you know, it's like as if they're forcing them, forcing him to do that. He could beat them with his arm. He doesn't even need to run. Dude can jack the ball up 80 yards. Marquise Brown can speed up and get that ball or Get Mark Andrews in a spot where he can make plays for them. You got Des Bryant, for God's sakes. Why are they not even using him? Which reminds me, going to Tampa Bay. How the hell does Antonio Brown only get seven receptions when there was seven more that could have been had, including a touchdown where he was single coverage in the red zone? Okay, I understand Antonio Brown got his troubles, but the dude has not lost anything in talent. When he's on the damn field, that, that was it. The moment you signed him, that's it. He's on your team. You got to utilize him like he's the best receiver in the NFL. I'm not saying he is, but damn it, when he's single covered in the red zone and you throw the ball to somebody else, you got issues, okay? I don't care if it's Mike Evans. It's like Antonio Brown, not even on the strong side. He's lined up on the weak side of the offense, so keep that in mind. They're on the opposite hash, which means it's like it's a gap of like, I want to say 8 to 10 yards. Where it's just like Antonio Brown could do so much room. He's more closer to, um, you know what I mean, the O line, you know, being in a kind of like in a slot. But regardless, like he had so much space going to his left. He could do whatever he wanted to that corner. Pick right, boom, hit left. All Tom Brady has to do is lob it in the corner, <clears throat> back corner of the end zone. Boom, you got an easy touchdown. Antonio Brown can do that. And the fact that they don't even utilize him, shame on Brady himself being the 18, 20 plus year vet, however the fuck many years he's been in the NFL. How do you fucking miss on that? I know for a fact I'm quarterbacking that shit. I see Antonio Brown, I'll niche him like, hey, go run a fade. Shh, shh. All I have to do is lob that motherfucker. Simple as that. You know what I mean? Like, I don't care how much space the cornerback is giving him. All he has to do is double a double freaking move where he acts like he's going to come back real quick, get the corner to bite, boom, then take step up, 
go left, curl around, back corner, boom, touchdown. It's not that fucking hard, all right? He's got speed. He's got agility. All you have to do is get the ball there quick. You got an easy touchdown. I, I don't know. I think it's crazy. I mean, the Panthers, I respect. I respect them for their integrity and really fighting to win every game. They just don't got the talent to get there. But I respect Teddy Bridgewater. Back-to-back -back weeks where he's putting his help on the line, really, to try to get this win. First the Chiefs and then now against Tampa Bay. Look, I can't commend them any, you know, enough. But it's just they're not that talented of a team to really make that run, which is a damn shame because I really would want to root for them. But what can I say? They're like the poor man's version of, like, Green Bay, per se. Um, or poor team's version, let me say that. Uh, who else was pretty terrible? Um, Drew Brees gets hurt, but he's been pretty atrocious this season. In fact, you could say it's his worst season. Really, maybe since the San Diego days. I mean, this dude was just magical. Now, like, his throwing power, and you notice that he most of his completions are really to Alvin Kamara or short passes. It's like, this guy could throw bombs. I remember the times where he would throw bombs and put up 40 a game after game after game after game. I mean, like, it's not that hard. Like, we've seen that not maybe a few years back. It wasn't too long ago. And now this season, all of a sudden, he lost that arm power. That's crazy. He gets hurt. Jameis Winston comes in. I mean, for the most part, too busy licking his finger more than really throwing the damn football. Uh, <laughs> how they escape that win? I'll tell you how. When you got your third string quarterback on the 49ers really not being able to do shit for your team while the defense is playing spectacular, that's how you lose a game. So, yeah, once again, incompetence on both teams. It was terrible, man. God, not, a, not one freaking good game from first quarter to the end of the game. With the exception, the closest game really getting there is that Cardinals-Bills game. That's about it. But come on. You're going to expect me to think that they're going to settle for a combined, what, six field goals in that game? That should have been back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back touchdowns after touchdown. That should have been like a 54 to like 49. That's what it should have been the score. Honestly, to me, it's still, it was still a disappointment. Not because of how it ended, but because of – I'm talking about the whole game in general. In the middle part, the ending was phenomenal. One of the best football endings we really will witness, man. I mean, come on, you can't beat a last minute Hail Mary touchdown to win the game. All right, last time we seen that, that was Rodgers doing that shit against the Lions. Um, so, uh, the Giants, I still bleed blue, I still love them dearly, even though I completely, completely cannot digest the roster that they have on that team I mean the players that they got on there I don't know why they're on that team it's bad um, for once Daniel Jones did not cough up you know another game due to turnovers I mean he still turned the ball over I mean that that's that's expected and that's a given in every game but yeah for once for freaking once they actually beat the Eagles they could have beaten them last time I'm still put on that Daniel on Daniel Jones. How could people roast Evan Ingrams? All right, how can you roast him for dropping a catch when you expect him to really catch him with this between his fucking fingernails? He hit him on the tip of his finger and he had to go to his outside shoulder. That was a difficult catch to make. You know what I mean? You guys are really, really insensitive to that. Honestly, I'm like, throw that ball more to the inside. Maybe not as much moon ball in that motherfucker and just let that shit land perfectly on his hands he'll catch that you know to me i've always been roasting engram for having bad hands but for the most part when he needs to show up i've seen him make the catches that needs to count so like to me i'm like better ball placement that's on daniel jones as a quarterback you can't be mad at him you gotta be mad at yourself first and if he actually showed any kind of anger towards engram for dropping that or any of the team I'm truly disgusted with that. Also, how they're how they're treating Golden Tate is surprising to me. I wasn't happy when he got signed to the Giants, but it's like no doubt the dude can come and ball. And yeah, he says throw me the ball more. He wants to make the plays. Once again, the Giants are pulling the same shit they did on Odell. You know, a guy that wants to come. You know what I mean? Be more part of the team and really do something when he feels like he could do something to help the team win. And you know he's a playmaker. Get him the fucking ball. It's not because he's a diva. He just wants to fucking win. I mean, the only winning culture he's ever been in 
God forbid it was what it was when he was with the Seahawks. Thank God he's already got his ring. So, you know what I mean? You can't really feel bad for him. But at the same time, it's like, you know, like Lions, Eagles. I mean, yeah, one year with them. I mean, but they were pretty mediocre. Let's be honest. Okay. Um, I don't know what to tell you. It's like they bench him for the against the Washington football team or something like that. And I thought that was pretty ridiculous. <laughs> and petty too, like as as well as that. It's like really you're gonna bench him because he says throw me the ball and he has to re back take that back and apologize. Let me tell you something. Fuck Joe Judge. Fuck fuck the rest of those coaching staff. I mean the minute I'm stepping in there, they're all fired. Ain't no discussion. <laughs> Good luck somewhere else, man, in another team, but not in New York, man. Not with that pity shit. You got to have big balls, and you got to deal with that, you know, accordingly. You know what I mean? The only coach I've ever seen do that is Tom Coughlin, and unfortunately, he's not on that team anymore. Dude, still have one of the best exits. I don't care what anyone says. He didn't even look at John Mara, walked away, just stepping down, and that was it. He was like, nope. Like, to me, that was cold. And, like, that's some New York... Like, you got to have some New York guts to do that. So, to me, uh, uh, I just personally think, you know, as... You could say as really as brilliant-minded as you can be, I just don't think Joe Judge is a fit for the New York Giants as their head coach. I think he's better off for another team. Say, for a smaller Frank, uh, smaller market. Really, if you ask me, I think he's good for the Midwest. I think the Detroit Lions are perfect for him, hands down. I think they're perfect. I also think the Cleveland Browns are pretty perfect as well. Uh, you know, like go to a, you know a losing organization that needs that winning culture and flux. The Giants don't need that. They know what winning is. They need they need a guy who can come in the realms and take control and not get upset about or do make you know what I mean rush the decision and do and just I don't know you know jump the gun. Like how he did on Golden Tate. I don't like that decision at all. Like, I don't like that. You know what I mean? So, uh, to me, it's like, it's one thing to really put the hammer down. It's another thing when, you know, you respond to something that doesn't need any sense of response. It's just like, let it go. If he's upset about not having the ball, talk to him. Figure it out. Let him talk to Daniel Jones. Let him work it out. It's like, you got to keep that shit in-house. Instead, you what you do? Oh, you suspend him. Like, I remember Pat Shermer did that to Odell. He wanted to travel with the team because even though he was injured, I think it was at 2017. I forgot. What year was it? Oh, no, yeah. I think it was like either 2018. Yeah, it was 2018. He wanted to travel with the team because he just wanted to be there for them. Pat Shermer wouldn't let him. I was like, you are something else, dude. I was so happy to see him gone. Like, I wanted in God. The moment I heard that, I was like, dude, he wants to go support the team, be there on the sideline, cheer them on, and you wouldn't let him come? Like, who the fuck does that? I don't know. Especially to someone who really should have been considered a cornerstone player but was dealt with ultimate disrespect. I mean, ultimate. I mean, like, really, probably the most disrespectful exit you could really give to a franchise player that could have turned things around. I mean, I think the Giants right now could be a lot better than where they're at right now if they still had Odell Beckham. You can't tell me otherwise. Dexter Lawrence was a luxury pick that honestly could have been spent better. I mean, another nose tackle, really? Like, I don't care how well he's playing right now. It's like, you had Dalvin Thomas and you just got Leonard Williams. It's like, you got way too many big body guys and you're about to get rid of a couple that you already made, like B.J. Hill. It's like, what the hell? To me, it's like, he seems, I think he has like an infatuation for drafting fat guys, and I don't, I don't know what it is. You know what I mean? Just like how he took Andrew Thomas the one time where, like, you know, when out of all the times you could have taken a tackle for an opportun, opportunist pick, you take it where you should have taken the best player available. I mean, I can go on and on about get him in, man. Fuck. Like, I'm so mad. I'm so mad about the Giants. But yeah, they came through with the win. I know that was a long ass sidetrack. Man. Yeah, they beat the Eagles, but the Eagles really ain't shit. And if the Giants play well, honestly, they could win this division. <laughs> as much as I would hate to see it right now. They could win the freaking division. Lose a really good draft pick. 
out of really puny pride of going to the playoffs to be exited out in the first round. Like, so, I mean, what are they going to do? Okay, let's say that hypothetically they get, I don't know. All right, they're at the fourth seed. They get one of the wild card teams. <laughs> are you kidding me? I don't know who they're going to play right now, but let's say they're in the front seat of the division. Let's say they play the Bears. I mean, the Bears, they could maybe, maybe, but they lost to them in Chicago. I don't know. You know, like, so what? You beat them, and then you're going to go to play Green Bay or potentially Arizona slash Seattle. It's like... Or whoever it is, like, I, I, I don't see it. I don't see the Giants making it far, man. You know what I mean? Uh, I still think a first-round exit, I think highly possible that it can win the division. It, it could be some crazy shit. Um, and to me, it's funny how people still want to give Daniel Jones, you know what I mean, benefit of the doubt. At this point... It's like, I'm just waiting for this to be over, man. I'm just like, is it over yet? I'd rather just sit under my rock and not pay attention, man. Oh, my God. I was so pissed. I wish I could have shown you my initial reaction when I, when they made that draft pick. I was so livid. I'm still in today. Anyone that's still trying to support him, like, oh, yeah, he's on the team. <sighs> what can I tell you? I mean, you're, I guess... You're a loyal fan, but not a smart one. That's for sure. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, but, yeah, this week was terrible. Uh, I'm trying to think of any other teams that played this, seat, that played this week that was tro- atrocious. I mean, I mean, Titans and Colts. Titans had a chance to do something. I mean, like, how do you take Derrick Henry out on a final drive? It's like, dude can get you a 20-yard run. All you have to do is hurry up, pass the ball to him. They're going to be tired. Like, to me, it's like you would do the opposite of what other teams would do. When they would not run the ball, you should run the fucking ball with Derrick Henry. I mean, he ends up handing the ball off to the other running back a couple times. It's like, what the fuck? Derrick Henry could catch the ball out the backyard I mean the backfield too it's like what are you not what are you doing taking out your best player when you need the game the most it's like they threw in the towel at that point when they had Derrick Henry on the sideline they're like nah we're not gonna win this game we're just gonna go ahead and just play garbage time and just get some reps in for I guess extra practice whatever like whatever you know what I mean um the Colts uh I gotta hand it to Phillip Rivers I mean I don't know what the heck he's working with on offense like to me, the only weapon that I really see pretty good that I don't, I don't understand why they're not connecting is T. Y. Hilton. But for the most part, it's like Philip is finding a way to get wins, and I mean, he's got a good pass catching running back, Aheem Hines, who probably reminds him of Darren Sproles. Um, but they don't got that much talent. I mean, outside the offensive line that they have, which is phenomenal. Like, what the hell? <laughs> uh, is that it? I think that is it. I don't think I missed a single game. Hmm. I think, yeah. Because the Cowboys were on a bye. The Chiefs were on a bye. The Falcons were on a bye. Yeah. I think I just covered every freaking team. But regardless, all the teams that played in this week from Thursday Night Football to uh, Monday Night Football... They all, at one point, showed incompetence. And last but not least, let me not start with the refs. And the, uh, I mean, God, it was a flag fest. You know, I mean, three things I could tell you what really led to the worst week ever for the NFL. Incompetent play on the offense. Just a flag fest of flags. Just delaying the game by the refs. And then also, too, they... When offenses got started getting, you know, started to get it going, they just decided to shoot themselves in the foot. Once again, that lies into competence. And then number three, uh, shoot, I don't know what else to tell you. Like, maybe poor weather, I guess. Windy, windy weather, rain. I mean, the Patriots 
Ravens game could have been better if it wasn't raining. I don't know. Fuck it. I'm done. It's your boy Drew Blue signing out. This was 30 minutes of why this week sucked.